Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's Tale, The Road, by Will C. I used to spend most of my Thursday nights driving. I would drop the girls off at home and then go. Just go anywhere. I needed those few small moments where I could feel completely free from everybody. There was a road that would stretch around an old garden shop that my friends all worked at for a few years. It started just outside the south of the city, a little road that would veer right so suddenly that I would do 20 under the limit just so I could spot it in time. It led past the garden shop and into straight blackness. I've been on that road a few times with some other friends, and I could predict most of the turns and stops far before I could see them. As I left the light of the city, I would flash on my high beams and make the sudden ride onto the road. Now, that one time, I must have turned too quickly. Uh, gravel and dust filled the back window of my car, sort of a dark cloud that, for a moment, took away all the light from the city behind me. The tires lost traction, and I started to veer into the ditch, fortunately saving myself with only inches to spare. My little Toyota Tercel wasn't the best thing for dirt roads, but, you know, was enough to get what I wanted out of it. The road stretched far beyond my sight, fading into a chilling darkness. Had a few small houses, some small farms, maybe some barns strewn along it, each with their own twisting paths, of course. The trees loomed above, cracking all the light coming from the sky. Long branches would stretch toward the ground like fingers pointing at me. I picked up more and more speed as the road started to straighten out, watching the edge of my headlight guide my way to a tranquil place far beyond the worries that either myself or anyone else held. Now up on the lip of a small hill that overlooks the city was a popular place for many of the teenagers here on the south end. You'd often see couples up there uh, <clears throat> solidifying their relationships and the occasional group of stoners who simply liked to watch things. The road led up to this place, curving right until the top of the hill was reached. As I climbed it, I could already see the taillights of four or five cars up there, all minding their own business. But I saw, also, a darker road, far less traveled on, this emerged on my left, avoiding the city watchers altogether. I, I had never seen it before, but I figured you know, I had a full tank of gas, and if I stayed an hour within sight of the city, well, what the hell? Might be worth my while to see something that I hadn't seen before. This road runs directly west, and it was completely straight. No houses, farms, barns, or anything else alongside. Even the trees had disappeared, opening up to a view of a vast farmland with hills on both sides of the road, cutting off any further sight of land. It was perfect. I stayed on this road for a long time. The iPod was on shuffle, and much of the music was hitting all the right notes that I wanted to listen to, mostly Led Zeppelin. There really is nothing like blasting stairway to shut out all the noise outside the car. It must have been... 20 minutes, I don't know, before I actually started to take in the outside and maybe worry a little bit. The hills on both sides of the car had grown so close to the road that they effectively turned into walls, blocking any sight around me, a tiny valley that seemed to stretch on into infinity. At a certain point, I figured I should just turn around and come back the way that I had driven. I hadn't made any turns, so it should be easy for me to follow all the way back. So I pulled over and made a U-turn, even signaled for it. I don't know why I did, but just for a second, 
that signal light caught something that stopped me in my tracks. It was tall and looked like a person, but it couldn't have been. I mean, it could have been a bush that the shadows made to look taller, even thinner. But I waited there for a few seconds with my headlights on, and there wasn't anything there. I kicked my car into the highest gear, and I was sailing. Wasn't going any faster than I needed to be, since there are tons of deer that like to run out in front of things out there, but it was fast enough that I was breaking the limit more than I was obeying it. From behind me, a light started to fill my mirror. I couldn't make out what it was at first, but then it cleared, and it was definitely headlights. And they were coming closer. I started to slow down a little, but I kept the momentum in case it might be one of the highway patrol making the rounds on the desert roads, but on the deserted roads. But something told me that whoever this person was, it wasn't a badge. Closer and closer the car got. It gained on me like they were being chased by something. And as the car became clearer, it zoomed past me in the oncoming lane, honking frantically. I mean, it could have been a couple of kids out for a kegger, but I didn't know. I, it didn't really alarm me until I looked in the rearview mirror again. And behind me was a face with no features, pale as paper, staring right at me. It didn't move, didn't even react to the bumps on the road. It was just there, like a picture on a screen, staring back at me. I was so frightened that I almost lost control of the car, drifting both to the left and right lane as I tried to get a hold of myself. I looked behind me, and there was nothing. <laughs> Not a single damn thing. The, the, the air hung fuller than before, almost damp. And every breath filled my lungs with thick, moist air. It had been the same thing from earlier, from the turning signal. I was terrified. I hit the gas harder, starting to speed past untouched places on my speedometer. I began to wonder if this was what that other person was running from, and if they got out. Then I saw a dim red light ahead of me, the other car. This time it's going slower, almost at cruising speed. I don't know if they think they're okay, but if it just got to me, then it is most certainly able to get to them. I started to honk frantically at the car as I sped past it in the oncoming lane. It didn't react. Look in my rear view again, and I see me driving the other car. And I start to feel a seizing in my stomach like I'm about to throw up. That, that, that couldn't have been me. Couldn't have. I shake my head to compose myself, and then I put the road back into my view. My eyes cleared, and the headlights behind me disappeared into the blackness. I was finally out of it, and I could start to see the hills spread apart to where they had been in the beginning. I let out one little laugh at the situation and start to rub the tiredness from my eyes. When I opened them back up again, that thing was in front of the car, dark and hunched over and staring back at me with those same non-existent eyes. My wheels caught on the gravel as I tried to avoid it and I ran full speed into the ditch, flipping the car over. Just for that little split second, I began to think about why I chose this road. I mean, there, there could have been any other. Crawled out of the wreckage with as much strength as I had left, and just before I fell asleep, a Toyota Tercel drove down the road that I'd just come, blasting Stairway to Heaven. I didn't even bother to scream. See, kids, human beings, we like to think that we've got a fairly good grasp on how the world works. But every now and then, we'll find someone, or 
something that has a better grasp. Sometimes those things aren't nice. So stay scary, wildlings. Remember, if you're always trying to get away from reality, maybe don't be too surprised when you get farther away than you wanted and make the most of your nights. <laughs>